Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This week we had two big pieces of news in the uh, world of the economics of the United States and how it might impact our mortgage rates in the housing market. So we're going to cover that today and then also we're going to talk about one in four of you out there uh, see it different than the other three and four. We'll talk about that a little bit too right after this. <laughs> So this week we had those two pieces of data. One was the consumer price index, the CPI, and the other was the producer price index, the PPI. And uh, both of those were a little higher than expected. So let's look at the headlines here. Prices rose more than expected in January as inflation won't go away. And uh, the consumer price index for the month of January was up 0.3%, uh, uh, which is higher than anticipated and also kind of changed the trajectory of what we we're looking at for uh, inflation, as you can see here. We have uh, a bit of an increase in January from the previous two months as far as a monthly change in inflation. And so that is putting a little bit of a pause in the markets. Uh, now uh, we're seeing folks move back uh, the anticipated rate cuts by the Fed from March to June. Of course, that impacts directly the 10-year treasuries and the mortgage rates. We've talked about that before on this channel, so uh, you're familiar with that. And when we break it down between uh, the all items inflation at 3.1% uh, and then what we call core inflation, which is less the more volatile food and energy uh, prices, uh, inflation was actually up 3.9% on an annual basis in the month of January. That is well above the 2% target that the Fed has set. And so they're going to continue their wait and see attitude. It is still lower than it was uh, a little over a year ago, um, you know, mid mid 2022, but still inflation is with us. And a quick quote here from Quincy Crosby, who's the chief global strategist for LPL Financial. You know, the much anticipated CPI report is a disappointment for those who expected inflation to edge lower, allowing the Fed to begin easing rates sooner than later. Across the board, numbers were hotter than expected, making certain that the Fed will need more data before initiating a rate cutting cycle. In addition, as we talked about, the PPI or the producer price index, the wholesale prices, so to speak, that uh, retailers uh, pay to uh, get those goods and services to you, the consumer, those went up as well uh, during the month of January, higher than anticipated. Um, let's have a look at those right now. So a couple things uh, drove that higher uh, producer price index this last month. Uh, rise in hospital outpatient care and just the general price of goods and services as well. So as a result, the markets kind of responded as you would anticipate and interest rates on mortgages went up ever so slightly. Uh, I anticipate that this week that we'll start seeing a gradual decline once again because the markets are anticipating that those uh, rates will be cut later in the year by the Fed, and that will in turn then lead to lower mortgage rates. In fact, we have some updated forecasts both on housing prices and on mortgage rates. I'm going to share those with you right now. Uh, everyone on this particular graph has updated their forecasts except for Realtor.com, and they have all increased uh, a little bit from what I shared with you at the beginning of the year as far as our 2024 forecast. So uh, you see anywhere from a 1.9% increase to a 5% increase in prices. Again, I'm gonna kind of leave realtor.com out of this because they have not yet re revised their forecast. And I think they will likewise at least, you know, go to a near flat uh, forecast once they do, do their revision. Overall, we're looking at about 2.7% average of those uh, forecasts, including the realtor.com. In addition, uh, some of the, the major forecasters have revised their mortgage rate projections and you see everything from a low of 5.8% at the end of 2024 by Fannie Mae to uh, both the Mortgage Brokers Association, the National Association of Realtors at 6.1%. If you average the three of those, we're anticipating about a 6% mortgage rate at the end of the year. So that's all good news uh, if you're looking to buy in the upcoming year. It's even better news if you're looking to sell 
in uh, the upcoming year because you'll have uh, likely more buyers out there with the better mortgage rates. If you finance your, your next purchase, uh, you will also have better rates. Now, that said, it's interesting that one in four still believe that prices will depreciate this coming year uh, in the mortgage industry. And to be perfectly honest with you, uh, if you look at a lot of the YouTube titles out there that talk about the, the housing market, uh, I, you wouldn't be surprised because there's a lot of doom and gloom out there. But the reality is the, the supply of homes is still so scarce in the market that it is uh, keeping prices higher than you would anticipate with the level of demand. But the demand still right now is exceeding um, supply. And as such, you know, Adam Smith told us, you know, prices will go up in those kinds of situations. But let's take a look at, uh, you know, we, we heard a lot of this doom and gloom in 2023 as well. What really happened? Well, when you look at the annual uh, percent of annual home appreciation, uh, homes appreciated by about 6%, depending on who you look at. I've seen the ranges from 5 to 7%. There's different surveys out there that look at that. But nonetheless, homes appreciated nationwide about 6% this last year. So let's say you had purchased a $400,000 home last year, and let's say you got an FHA loan, and you only put 3% down. That's $12,000 that you put down. In that same year, though, if your home appreciated by 6%, your home's value increased by $24,000. So that $12,000 down payment, your investment, basically doubled in that one year time. Your $12,000 investment has created $24,000 of additional value in your home, and that's a 200% return on that investment. Now that's of course assuming that whatever you're paying for your mortgage was similar to what you were paying in rent before, but nonetheless, that's a very remarkable return on your investment for that down payment. As a matter of fact, if you look at the nation's uh, top 20 cities, the Case-Shiller home price movement, the national average that they had was 5.1%. And only one of those cities saw depreciation, and it was by less than 1%, and that was Portland, Oregon. And we've... Uh, uh, if you, you know about the specifics of Portland, there there are some uh, trying times right now in Portland, and so it does not surprise me that their home prices were relatively flat. But even some of the, the larger California cities that we've been anticipating uh, seeing some depreciation, they all increased during 2023. And when you look historically, uh, investing in yourself, in your family by buying a home has paid great dividends and generated wonderful wealth for most families over this period of time. Obviously, if you get cut, caught in a situation like in the late 2000s where you're forced to sell because you're moving or something like that, there may have been a loss. But over the long term, it's been a steady uh, return on investment of nearly 5% per year. In addition, you're gaining additional um, equity by paying down the principal with your monthly rent payment also known as a mortgage payment. So when you see all that doom and gloom out there, uh, just remember this slide and remember that uh, buying a home is a good investment for you and your family. So with that, I'm gonna close the video. I wanna thank you for your time and attention. If you like these updates, please uh, put a like on there. And if you wanna hear more like this, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out a lot. It's absolutely free for you. And with that, we'll be back uh, soon with another video about you know, the old housing market and real estate. Thanks much. Talk to you soon.